by Arthur Hamilton Yap, DSO, DL, 1874 to 1948. A picture of him as an old man which sits in our sitting room on the wall is shown. Nice old fellow he looks, doesn't he? A latter day warrior, however. As I'm supposed to be talking about his medals, which you can see in front of you, I will summarize his army career briefly for context and then talk about the Salonica campaign. Salonica seems to be coming up an awful lot tonight, surprisingly, because most of us have hardly heard of it, where he won the DSO. He was Uncle Arthur to my mother, actually my great-great-uncle, who died, <laughs> yeah, don't chill. Don't chill. who died the year before I was born, is that right? He was born in 1874 at the Hall Winscombe, son of the Reverend John Augustus Yatman and his wife Anna Victoria Blatchley, nay Turner, from Banwell. He was a really local boy. In 1893, he went to Sandhurst, after going to Blundell's, where he appears to have been a contemporary of Winston Churchill. He joined the Somerset Light Infantry, his local regiment, soon after. Anyway, he had a long and varied military career as a regular soldier. In 1899, he went to South Africa with the 1st Battalion, of the Somerset Light Infantry, aged 25. And when he went to South Africa, he was at the Battle of Colenso shortly before the relief of Ladysmith, where I think they had a pretty tough fight. He came back on a, a, a hospital ship in 1902, which suggests he wasn't as well as we, he might have been expected. In 1903, he was promoted captain, at which rank he remained until 1914. <coughs> At the outbreak of the First World War, he was at Colchester when called up, and by the end of August, he had fought at the Battle of Lakato, for those who know about it, that was a quite important battle, and followed as the year progressed by the Battle of the Marne, the Ain, and Messines. He was mentioned in Sir John French's dispatches, and he was soon acting as a major, and he was also joined in the battalion by two Leecroft nephews from Roborough, where his elder sister had married. The following year, 1915, he was wounded towards the end of January, and we've heard about the battles in January earlier. But later that year, so he came home after that for a bit, he was moved to Salonica, where he was attached to the 11th Battalion of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers. <coughs> The Salonika or Eastern Front opened in 1915 when the Bulgarians entered the war and took over Serbia. The Front was essentially under the command of a set of French generals uh, and was a bit of a political football as well. It was characterized by particularly difficult and mountainous operating conditions. After a number of indecisive operations through 1916 and 1917, by the end of 1918, the Allies in Macedonia consisted of Serbian, Greeks, French, Italians, and ourselves. Quite a mixed bag. The Allied army was unkindly and probably very unfairly christened the gardeners of Macedonia by some politician. But to progress, in September 1918, the Serbians and the French in the west of the line in, um, in Macedonia, and the Greeks and the British in the east, agreed that the western Serb end of the line would attack first and the eastern end some days later if operations went well. The Serbians with the French attacked with encouraging results on the 14th and 15th of September with success. On the 18th of September, therefore, this is in 1918, the British 22nd Division and others, including the Greek Serious Division, attacked in parallel up the hill in the third battle of Doirad. Uncle Arthur's Royal Welsh Fusilier Battalion was part of the 67th Welsh Brigade in the centre of the Doirad attack. Close on their immediate left was the 11th Welsh Brigade and beyond them the 7th South Wales Borderers. I mention that particularly because of Gerald's later talk. 
Beyond the South Wales borders was part of the Greek Ceres Division, and then the 66th Brigade from North West England, who were equally brave and unsuccessful, suffering similarly with 65% casualties. <coughs> the battlefield was overlooked by a peak called the Grand Coron, with blasted rock trenches and reinforced concrete positions and observation points. The top of the hill was referred to as the Devil's Eye, for reasons which I, we can all imagine. In front of this commanding observation point, the battlefield consisted of rising ground cut by steep, steep rocky-sided ravines, ideal for defence. It had been fought over several times before, unsuccessfully, and was manned by some of the Bulgarians' best troops and officers. For all hope comes to mind, but essentially the plan demanded that the British and Greeks hold Bulgarian troops away from the main Serb and French attack. Briefly, let me quote the last words from the 11th Royal Welsh Fusilier Battalion War Diary for the 18th of September 1918. A quiet night, one six inch trench mortar and one small Grammatan Führer were captured in 06. 20 officers and one medical officer and 480 other ranks went into the attack. Three officers and 100 other ranks returned unwounded. A. H. Yatman, Lieutenant Colonel Commanding. A hard day's work, I suspect. The upshot of all this nasty business was that the Bulgars should, sued for peace a few days later, with the Serbs from the west threatening their communications and by slumping morale at home. To put this lack of a loss of life and the offensive in perspective, a quote from Field Marshal Ludendorff's memoirs the following year may help. August the 8th was the black day for the German army in the history of this war. This was the worst experience that I had to go through, except for the events that, some, from September the 15th onwards, took place on the Bulgarian front and sealed the fate of the Quadruple Alliance. Arthur Yatman was awarded his DSO and the Greek decoration, in, and both of those are in, in that box, in early 1919 for his part in operations. But I suspect it wasn't just his part, I suspect it was the part of all his men as well. I have been able to find a detailed citation, which is apparently common for early 1919 awards. However, some laconic comments he made in the battalion war diary, from which I read a bit earlier, about the position of the battalion headquarters during the battle, suggests that he was too close to the fighting on the 18th of September for comfort, probably pleading from the front. And he was aged 44. Mm -hmm.